Hello, friends. This is Jay Judson here, just sharing with you how to share with Buddhist people the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ by using the words of Mr. Buddha himself. Buddha has uh, four noble truths that uh, my friend, the lawyer, uh, helped me develop and helped me understand how, how his worldview from his Buddhist background. Um, Buddhist people believe in Buddhist four noble truths and the Eightfold Path. Now, most of the monks don't preach this as the main point of what they're saying. They actually minor on these, uh, they major on these minor points of Buddhism, like meditation and and going to um, pagodas and you know pilgrimages and and uh, earning uh, lots of merit. <clears throat> earning lots of merit is not the main heart of what Buddha taught. Meditation is not the heart of what Buddha taught. What the heart of what Buddha taught, which is in every book on Buddhism, is the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path. The Four Noble Truths are, first truth is Dukkha. Dukkha is the cycle of sin uh, and suffering, or suffering. All of life is suffering. You'll hear people say that, and when a Westerner hears that, they have absolutely no idea what that means. It just means you're supposed to accept suffering and just be like fatalistic about things, uh, kind of, yeah. But it's more about uh, death. That death happens, and and uh, but the the point that really starts to make a connection to a Western Christian worldview is the second point of Buddha that Buddha taught, the second noble truth. I don't know who translated these as noble, but um, <clears throat> the second noble truth is that all of life is caught up in this sin. And that's the Christian word that would uh, be translated in uh, Buddhist understanding as craving or desire or evil desire. And Buddha described this as a black fire burning inside the soul of everyone. And Buddha said the reason why you have suffering and death in the cycle of reincarnation is because you have this evil craving or this, this evil desire. And he described this, this evil desire as a, as a black fire burning inside of everybody, which is related to the next point that Buddha taught. A great book that you can read is called What the Buddha Taught by a uh, Sri Lankan monk named, uh, who has a PhD, uh, Wupula, What the Buddha Taught. Uh, so the third point is related to the second point is that there's a place where there's no more sin and there's no more suffering. There's no more black fire burning inside of everybody. Literally, the word nirvana means no fire, no burning. Ne in Hindi is is a, a negative, means no. Vana means burning or fire. It doesn't mean the fire of existence, according to this PhD uh, Sri Lankan monk. It means the annihilation of the fire of the craving of sin. So he says that you cannot say that nirvana means nothingness. It means annihilation. And so he says that, uh, I think it starts on page 35 of what the Buddha taught. And uh, it's very clear that, that that is what he means. But it's popular in, in a lot of book Buddhism, a lot of scholarly Buddhism, which I believe is a new version of Buddhism, a new version of the understanding, a new definition of nirvana is that it's annihilation. And this is simply not the case because everywhere you go in the Buddhist world, there are pictures of a city floating on a cloud. And you ask the people, well, what's this in this Buddhist cartoon book? And they say, oh, that's, well, that's uh, the Golden City. You know, they're like, Golden City of what? And they say, well, of nirvana. And so... This is what we connect the gospel to. It is a minority view within Buddhism, but uh, it is legitimate. According to many monks that I've met personally, encountered, and talked to all across Myanmar, which is uh, the same worldview as Thailand. <clears throat> and uh, the person who really showed this to me, uh, this, that this bridge of understanding is, is a lawyer. And so he, he asked the people, so uh, are you going to Nirvana? Which the people have to admit, no, and he you know, leads into why. Well, because I have sin. Why do you have sin? Well, I've I have sin because of my evil desires. So, <clears throat> the third noble truth, or the fourth noble truth, is the key. Buddha said is the key on how to get to Nirvana, or the city of gold, is the eightfold path. The eightfold path means that you are 
perfect thinking, perfect mindfulness, perfect action, perfect, perfect, perfect. The eight points, you don't have to memorize all of them. It would be helpful if you did in these various languages across the 10 countries of the Buddhist world that there is, a, you have to be 100% perfect. And summarized, a lot of times the Buddhist uh, people would, would know the five precepts of Buddha that you take, five precepts, to no killing, no stealing. And that's what this image is of the killing at the, at the bottom there around the guy who's meditating upon nirvana. Um, the reason for meditation is to not think about having adulterous affairs, not think about money. That's the picture of the dice. Not thinking about getting drunk. And so they, they know all the five precepts. The five precepts go under the category of the fourth noble truth, which is the Eightfold Path, which is the key, according to Buddha, to be set free from this cycle of sin and suffering and to go to nirvana. You must be 100% perfect. You must live a 100% perfect life. And of course, anybody that understands the gospel would, would clearly connect this to the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is saying, you must be perfect as my Father in heaven is perfect. He's saying, if you even think about killing somebody, you have committed an evil desire in your mind. And, and according to God's law, God sees those thoughts. According to Buddha's law, you are going to be judged. And you can never go to nirvana, even if you think about killing somebody, even if you think about having an adulterous affair, even if you think about being greedy for money, if even you think about stealing from somebody else, or if you think about escaping from your world's problems by getting drunk. So thinking about sin is just as, you'll be just as guilty um, as acting on those sins. But a lot of times the Christians use these terms for sin that really don't communicate. They, they, what they communicate to Buddhists is you're a criminal. And they say they use these words like a pit and Thai or a pit and Burmese, which is based on the same Pali word. It just means crime. And so, of course, the Buddhist people said, no, we're good people. We want to do good. We are, we're not criminals. And so a better word would be Gilead and Thai or, or Kilitha in, in Burmese. It's all based on the Pali Kilisa. And that means this evil craving desire, which there are 10 of types of this evil craving desire that I forgot to mention at the beginning which is Lopa, Dotha, Moha in Burmese, or it just means uh, lust, ignorance, or greed. And so all Buddhist people have to, f have to freely admit and confess, I have these b fires burning inside of me. These first, I mentioned the first three out of ten. And so they all understand that they're sinners. If you use their terminology, if you go in and you say, oh, you're a criminal, they're like, no, 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 I'm not a criminal. So... <laughs> What I've seen, we've seen tens of thousands of Buddhist people come to Christ through this lawyer's method, that the lawyer is the one leading all these people to Christ, but I've also seen a lot of people come to Christ. They're so open, they're so hungry for the truth. But if you go in and use all these Christianese language terms, you are going to get very little traction. There will be no multiplication. There will be leading to just additional kind of growth of, of, a, of a church to a church or a house church. It won't be a multiplying network. We've seen people who immediately, when they hear this, they turn around and go share it with their friends, and then it goes to the third generation within a week. And so it's so much part of their worldview. This lawyer, these 42,000 Buddhist background believers have said, this is the way, I've seen them over and over again, this is the way to share the gospel with Buddhists effectively. It's not the only way. I don't want to worship a method, and we don't want to take too much pride in our method. God is just blessing, but it's, it's, it's one way that God is using and I would I would urge you to pay attention to this way I started to draw it out into pictures so that people could really get a grasp of what it's all about so thanks for listening if you got any more questions just post those questions there's a lot more to that uh, that's the my best summarized version thank you God bless